Hi everyone, this is Chris with another Scale Builder, and in this episode I'm going to cover visual display issues you might see after importing third-party data into SketchUp. So on the screen, what you're seeing is an example of possibly a CAD import, either you know, a DWG or an IFC import. Um, and as I approach the model, you'll start seeing some strange behavior on the screen. Okay, the shimmering that you might see, uh, perhaps some uh, section cutting, and as I approach even closer, notice you start seeing some splintering, and it's, it's pretty awful. It's really hard to snap to various corners, and all this is due to the fact that this model was imported far away from the SketchUp origin. Now let's take a look at see how far. I'm going to go ahead and orbit and you'll see the axis in the, in the distance there. Activate my drawing tool and I'll start by snapping in the origin and then I'll just bring it close and snap to anywhere on this model just to get an idea. Now if you look over in the lower right hand corner of the screen, it says it's over 3 million feet away. That's approximately, I don't know, around, you know, over 600 miles from the origin. And as a general rule, you want to have your modeling environment and the alt geometry as close to the origin as possible. Because SketchUp, in the way it displays geometry, uses the origin to help calculate and, and, and project to the screen. So what is one to do if you have this type of behavior? Okay, so let's try to see if we can't correct it. The obvious thing is to actually just bring it closer to the origin. So let's go ahead and do that. Select all the geometry. And then I'm going to use the move tool and just, just start the movement, okay, in some random direction. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually tell SketchUp where to place this model. Okay, and, and I'm going to be very absolute in telling it where to go. And in this case, I'm going to tell it to go straight to the origin. And I'll do that by, again, I'll just, you know, you don't even have to click onto the model itself. You can just click anywhere, start the movement, and then I'm going to type in the square bracket, the square left bracket, and then type 0, 0, 0, and then the right bracket. Um, I mean, that's the origin of the SketchUp model, and that's and the brackets tell SketchUp that you want this exact absolute coordinate to, to snap, to go to, to move to. So I'll hit return and zoom extents. And you'll notice that suddenly, boom, the, the model is now in place. And I can, you know, move this again and have it snap to the origin. Perhaps that's where I want it to go. Um, now notice that some things have corrected themselves and some things haven't. You still look at this geometry here, it tends to be a little bit stable, the steps here. Um, yet this mailbox is, is shimmering like crazy, and most everything else is shimmering. That's because each group of component has its own origin. And oftentimes when you're importing in, let's say, an IFC file that has been generated, let's say, from Revit, they export it out uh, using survey data. And uh, the survey coordinate tends to be a state plane coordinate, which could be you know, hundreds of miles away. So what you're seeing here is although the model and its raw geometry might be displaying correctly, the individual components are not because they are still, in their own way, uh, 600 miles away. Okay, and let's take a look at proof of that. I'll go over to this window over here, or at least try to, and notice here's my current axis. And if I double click on the window, notice that it has moved 600 miles away. So we have to go ahead and correct the, the axis origin for each component. So I'll go ahead and select this chair, for example. Okay, and what I'm going to do to correct it is I'll right click, and there's a feature here that says change axis, and that will change the axis for that component or group. Okay, so I'll click a few times, and notice that the axis is now displayed right where I placed it, and now that, that chair, although the, the walls are kind of interfering, you can see that chair is nice and stable. Oh, and by the way, I have a mode on right now, a, a visual setting under the model info uh, to display all the component axes, okay? So that's why you can see that right, right there. Let's do it for the mailbox. 
So I'll click the mailbox, change axis, and I'll just place it right there for right now. You can always relocate the axis later on. My main intent is just to get everything stable so I can continue my modeling. So there's my axis there. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up the layers panel here and turn off the exterior. And you'll notice that I have a lot of other items that I have to correct. Okay, and again, I can go through each one and say change axis and just place it randomly right there and it'll stabilize that piece. Okay, but if I have, you know, hundreds of different items in here, um, you know, that might take a little bit of time. But uh, thanks to some development in our developing community in the extension warehouse, there actually is a com a, an extension that's going to help uh, speed up that process. And it's by TomTom, Tom, and it's called uh, Access Tools. So the way that works is I'm going to go ahead and, again, select everything in my model. And in fact, let me go ahead and turn this back on because the windows have to be corrected as well. And select everything and activate that extension. And it's called Access Tools. And what this is going to do is find all the components and groups, find all the geometry within each one, and find the bounding box and let uh, and automatically reset their axis to the uh, various places in that bounding box. So hit here. And notice here, you can actually say, do you want it to be at the center of the component? Do you want it to be at the left, the right, the top, the front, the back? It's up to you to decide how you want those placed. Okay, say OK. And notice everything's reset. And now you can see all the component axes are now local or very, very close to the geometry itself. This model is stable and it's ready for further modeling. Okay, I hope this helps and thanks a lot.